you guys have put in. We're at 48 viewers, according to my statistics oh, here. Uh, <laughs> it, it's going a lot better than I, I'd ever hoped for. I want to thank uh, especially Paul, our, our tech person who's running all the things. Um, yeah, I, I guess we can kind of jump right into it. Uh, we're going to introduce some of the players. Uh, as you know, I am Hamasama-kun. I'll be the one running this game. And, uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Oh, These are our titular <laughs> hot Asians, everybody. Oops. Fun detail yeah. I noticed about the overlay is the fact that I'm on the uh, on the right side, so you could technically read it right to left, which I just think is a funny detail. As opposed hey. to <laughs> I think that's a that's a it's a, it's a important detail. Even it's all about the we logo. are it is. We are already out here, and you know we're we're here to educate you about the the lovely bits of Asian lore we put into this. Uh, <laughs> so. Again, you already know who I am, so we're going to start with some cast introductions. Lily, would you like to tell everybody about yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lily, also known as Mother of Sad Boys. Um, I, I don't know. I'm really bad at this. Um, I, don't, uh, I live in Florida. Um, I am a uh, mixed Asian, so I am, I am Japanese and white. Um, if you cannot tell by my skin tone, um, <laughs> where can where can people find you uh, on the internet? Uh, you can find me at Twitch, Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok, um, basically everywhere at Mother of Sad Boys. Um, and yeah, I, I do a lot of fun stuff. I am currently uh, eight months pregnant, so this has been fun. <laughs> Congratulations on that one. That's awesome. That'll be our new uh that that's our newest cast member. Uh we have to yep. <laughs> Oh my god. Child. It's like, yeah, alright, kid, roll month. for initiative. <laughs> That'll be hey, the last yo. action we do today. <laughs> have the kid roll for initiative. So Perfect. True. I think that's that's I think that's definitely where we need to go with this. Uh following up uh Sam. Howdy everyone, uh, I'm Sam, or Raether in most places on the internet. I am a Vietnamese American uh, academic and voice actor and writer and other things. You can find me at Raether underscore VO on uh, Twitter, TikTok, and most other social media. Um, and I'm, I'm just really excited to be here. We've been working on this for months and I'm so eager to just dive into this world together and of course <laughs> last but not least rabu it's me rabu or red rabu which is where you can like look up me up on anywhere anywhere wink wink nudge nudge um <laughs> other than that i'm also a professional cosplayer and art model and i am also super excited to finally the day has come um i'm just also super excited to play Hot Asian D and D with actual fellow hot Asians. <laughs> so true. Uh, <laughs> we are the titular hot Asians. Uh, fun fact: that name started as a joke and somehow it persisted all anymore. the way until our premiere <laughs> we day. Shake it. We couldn't we, shake it. it. <laughs> we have merch of that exact thing now. So speaking of merch, hey yo, yeah. <laughs> what's <laughs> up? Our legendary man, a man died here. Comes in in, in t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops. Tank tops. <laughs> the 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 word had uh, escaped my mind, and also these really Even cool crop hoodies. I yeah. Um, we also have this this neat little cherry blossom design, and one with a hot dragon man on it that says Dilf. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Dilf's is a winner, I think. <laughs> so in addition to. <laughs> Please do. In addition to all the hot Asians, I also really want to take a moment to thank everybody who contributed to this project who aren't uh, playing right now, but will eventually. Uh, you saw earlier um, that Falcon uh, raided us. Uh, they they helped out with some sections of the world. We have Twi Fairy or Julie, as people know them. Uh, we got Dean. We got probably a handful of other people, but I. PowerPoint. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Julie. It, it, it's coming. 
That'll be next episode. We're just not going to play D&D. We're just going to talk about how cool Julie is. Uh, but thank hey, you. Hey, Chris, where can they find the merch at? Hey, you can find the merch at my Teespring store linked on my TikTok, Hamasamakun. Um, there should be a link around here somewhere, but it's pretty cool. Just saying. <laughs> uh, guaranteed to, I don't know, do something. Make your day better. Work. Yeah, <laughs> that. I was going to say something. In the stream. I, I should we'll do have. that next time. <laughs> next time on Hot Asian D and D merch button. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we have a little mission statement we'd like to read for you all, and by we I mean me. Uh, but thank you to Sam who wrote it for us. So before we begin, a short disclaimer: this D and D series is first and foremost grounded in the representation and embrace of Asian voices in their diverse, multiplicitous, and honest forms. The world, characters, and stories we tell in this table are intended to contribute to that goal, and we hope that by joining us in this storytelling journey, you can grow your own worldview. More than anything else, the stories we tell here are renderings of our own experiences, which cannot be anything but authentic. Uh, they may not be wholly representative of any ephemeral concept or of a race or culture, but they are all ours, we hope that they will be contributions to the growing world of Asian voices in the fantasy genre. If you're interested in contributing to the to the very same goal, we encourage you not only to listen to our series here, but also to listen to other great stories that spotlight Asian voices. This week, we'd like to suggest Asians represent uh, a group of really cool people that you know. I hope to get on this uh, this series one day. Uh, <laughs> so, with all that in mind, welcome to Hot Asian D and D. Let's go. All right. So, as the lights sort of dim, players take their marks, and the pages turn once more. It is quiet. That's the first thing you notice about the end of the world. The silence. You see, most people think the world will end in a show of divine wrath, that the seas will boil and the sky will burn. But sometimes, the end is just a parade of tiny, broken things stretched out over the course of a lifetime. The last of the petals fall from the trees and scatter down like rain. The oceans lay still, stagnant, lifeless. And three heroes stood alone. But their story doesn't start here. Mukashi Mukashi, Aru Tokoro ni. In the twilight days of creation, when earthbound gods did battle with vicious monsters, there was an island, a city, and a pale blue sky. Welcome to Zhao Sang, jewel of a thousand kingdoms, an island nation teeming with culture and life, resting far beyond the influence of the world you know. A shining, prosperous place where both technology and the divine have paved the way to rise up beyond what was thought possible by the heroes of old, giving way for what was once thought to be a distant dream, to find purchase in a new age. There is harmony, peace, tentative as it may be. For beyond its crescent lands and cerulean shores are kingdoms with cultures all their own. From Kumori, a land of ancient and powerful kami, to Suktaban, a vast kingdom of proud nomadic warriors. All of whom 
wished to prove their might on the world stage. And while their fates lay uncertain, we trust the gods to guide their path. But you didn't come for a history lesson. You came for tales of heroes new and old, stories of love, loss, and all the little moments that make up the brunt of one's life. And while the details are hazy and clouded, I believe this particular story starts with a dream. Kobayashi Akemi takes the stage. Would you like to describe your character? <laughs> You're also muted. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> um, so Akemi is a five foot seven um, female Kalish star. She has black hair and um, ghostly pale eyes. Um, she is dressed in very fine silks, and her kimono is of the highest quality because she comes from a very affluent family. Um, she doesn't really have much expression on her face. She rarely does. And she has an air about her that's almost, I would say, blissfully ignorant about the world around her. Um, she also um, has a bluish gray tint to her skin. Um, making her look like there's like a, a level of dust on her skin but not quite um, and yeah okay lost you are lost memories flash like lightning a storm in the mind's eye that never ceases not even for a moment it's all so unclear, that brief threshold between dreams and waking, where what once was and what never will be overlaps. You see images, fragments, pieces to be put together, but the full image never shows. Is it real? Is any of this real? Akemi, you find yourself adrift in worlds unseen, cascading along the infinite haze of recollection, walking down paths you scarcely remember. You've been here before, in your dreams, in your memories, in those quiet moments in the dead of night. All around you, the threads of fate weave and spin, pulling you towards your bending destiny, but Everything feels wrong. A fog begins to roll in. What do you do? Can I do a perception check, please? Absolutely. <laughs> First roll of the game, folks. <laughs> uh. All right, looks like I'm pulling Sam numbers this time. Uh. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> you have to call me out like that on day one? It's I mean, a they, six, they, they guys. A six? Ooh. Oh, boy. That fog is thick. Oh, man, it's It foggy. is a thick fog. Dummy thick fog. She's in soup. <laughs> <laughs> All around you, you see this cloud almost you can barely see a few feet ahead of you but there is this faint light in the distance that's all you see oh, okay um well knowing what i know about the afterlife i'm head towards the light then <laughs> as you <laughs> pushing your way through the fog you catch a glimpse of fur Three tails that glow a ghostly white. Mivy. You you remember Mivy. He he runs, dashing into the fog before you. Uh 
Yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna follow that little fucker. <laughs> you follow him. You walk, though your vision is cloudy. But ahead of you, murky shapes begin to come into focus, a blur that paints the picture of days long since past. The fourth of Lee, two years ago. It's funny how one decision can greatly influence a life. One word spoken in secret, one night spent together, one unexpected miracle. A gentle glow rolls over hills of dense foliage, starlight not yet receding in the presence of dawn. You find yourself in a field of wheat and barley, caught in the gentle sway of the wind. Ahead of you, you can see a human man staring up into the sky, framed against the rising sun. What do you do? Fuck you, Chris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Akemi is going to carefully walk towards him. As you approach, you recognize him. He turns to face you. The gentleness in his eyes, the smell of peach blossoms and cedar. It's your husband, Enzo. He looks at you and the whole world seems to fall away. The two of you caught in the infinity of this moment. There's this very gentle nature to him as he says, I know this isn't much, but it's ours. Just imagine it, the sun rolling over the hills, watching our daughter grow up. I know I'm not a perfect man, but I hope to give you a good life here. Mm. <sighs> Ooh, okay, um, I'm actually going to roll a history check if I can. What are you trying to glean from this history check? If it's real or not. Roll a history check. Don't look at me, come on. Nine. You're not sure. Being a Kalishtar, you don't dream, you reminisce. You remember. Your Kami takes you on journeys into the past. This moment happened. It feels real, but you can't tell if that's simply because you want it to be or because it is. Kemi's just going to, you know, sit there with like a almost expressionless look on her face, but you can see that there are tears starting in the back of her eyes, and um, she's just going to gently squeeze his shoulder and and tell him thank you. As you reach out for him. You hear this sort of echo. Maybe the last words he said to you, you're not sure, as he just says, I love you, Akemi. It just sort of echoes out. The world grows cold. That warmth, that familiar feeling fades away as suddenly you find yourself running, no, sprinting through the woods. You remember this night, this moment, the feeling of the cold midnight air, your heart beating out of your chest. You know what's coming, what's always one step behind. What do you do? Mm. The only thing I can do? Keep running. Keep running through this dark forest, shadows twist and bend. It all looks the same. You don't know where you're going. 
but you do know where you've been. You continue on further and further into the woods until eventually you come face to face with a shadow, a humanoid figure whose limbs bend and snap into unnatural positions, and it screams. It lowers its head towards you, and it just whispers, Run! Creatures upon you in moments, and as it bears its fangs and moves to strike, you wake up. Awesome. Rooted firmly in the present. It's festival season. Mivy is curled up in a ball on your chest, and gentle beams of unfiltered sunlight streak lazily into your room. First of Lee, present day. What do you do? Uh. <clears throat> Gently uh, pick up Mivy off of my chest and toss him across the room because I somehow feel like this is his fault. <laughs> this small, three tailed kitsune kind of like groggily wakes up. What? What? What did, it, what, what did I do? What, what's happening? Um, I can't meet without any word to him. Just, you know kind of rolls out of bed um, very properly, just starts getting her clothes on. Um, shoots him like daggers with his with her eyes and just goes, you know, nice memories would be good every once in a while. As she just walks out the door. I take you where you need to go. <laughs> And as you depart from the room, you do notice a small pouch of coins resting on a table near the door, along with, along with a note. Um, okay, before I touch the pouch of coins, I read the note without picking it up. It's pretty simple, just kind of scrawled on this like loose pit of, bit of paper. It says, gone out for supplies. Treat yourself to something good to eat to celebrate. Lady Lynn's has the best cold soba in town. Don't argue either. If I find this money anywhere in the house, I'm going to stop letting you win at Shogi. It's a <laughs> note from Gigi. Aw. Gigi. Um, I can't be chuckles and just goes, okay. <laughs> Defeated puts the, the pouch in, in her kimono and... Um, goes to find the soba, please. Okay. That leads you to the festival grounds. You depart from Gigi's house, this sort of architectural clutter, buildings sort of built on top of each other, loose piping, which then leads us. We cut, distant and away, to a world of man and monster. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. Life isn't easy. Few things are. But for some, salvation comes in the form of a lone figure strolling over the horizon. The sweltering heat comes in waves, washing the lakeside district of the salt crust in a layer of thick miasma. The wind is calm, carrying a song to the sweet hereafter. Luduk Kong takes the stage. Would you like to describe your character? Yeah, so, uh... Kong is a six-foot-tall, kind of broad fella. He wears a kind of, uh... tabard dress. Uh, an aoyai, for those of you who are in the know. The edges of it are frayed and aged. This red and golden thing that's faded by the sun. Where the shoulders, uh, shoot meet. Uh, sleeves, you can see where it's torn and kind of fallen off. Hanging over a back, uh, over his back is a large battle axe, and I adjust the hat in my head looking up at the sweltering sun. Shit. 
What's a guy gotta do for some lunch around here? Now word on the street paints the picture of a grizzled demon hunter, weapon in hand, carving through hordes of monsters. But in times of greatest need, they turn not to the monster hunter, but rather the man beneath it all. The man with the kind eyes. At about 7 a.m., as the fishermen prepare their boats and the city comes alive, the beckon of fate bends Kong's journey to the will of forces unseen. Now, what does the morning usually look like for Kong? Uh, depending on whether I'm waking up in an inn or in the middle of the woods, really, uh, more often than not, I'm falling off a of bed and trying to wipe out some sleepiness from my eyes. First things first, breakfast. You sort of walk into the Saltcrest District, this floating area built from like different, like almost like a weave of boats that have just been dry docked and expand outwards into the horizon. See a water genasi selling fish. He calls out, fresh fish for sale. Just caught them this morning. Just three coppers per. Kind of like looks over at you, Kong. Yeah, I push past the crowd. You said three coppers. Three and coppers, I yeah. Out my, uh, my coin pouch with a single coin. <laughs> big, I whip out the coin. Big strong boy. Ooh. I whip out the coin. He the gold. he gathers up all these. Uh, this is sort of like a pound of fish almost. Looks over at you. I I recognize you. You're you're Kong, right? You dealt with the demons and the Lord of Scattered Rains all that way back, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um didn't realize that people heard about that. Yeah, yeah. We close knit community friend, we hear everything. So he kind of like gathers up these foods. You can see this like freshly made um like beef bun that he just has like sitting on the counter. It's like gathers that up too and just sort of like a, a bag of fish and the bun. Please take this. You saved a lot of good people that day. I sling the uh, bag over my shoulder and grab the bun and kind of like put it between my teeth. All in good day's work. <laughs> you continue along, passing by street vendors and festival carts. The gentle sway of the floating district, pale, paired with the smell of the ocean, is a lot to take in, to say the least. But on a clear day, when the wind is just right, it reminds you of home. That feeling is tragically cut short, however, as you hear, Tours and trinkets galore, all to be found right here. Celebrate the day's festivities <laughs> with one of these genuine demon-repelling charms. Guaranteed to repel a demon or your money, uh, well, it stays with me, but it'll be a good lesson to pass down to your kids. Wait a second. Don't I know you? Following the noise, <laughs> you see Kato, <laughs> a Kalistar with dark, shaggy hair and piercing silver eyes. He wears a loose-fitting robe that ties at the hip and seems otherwise preoccupied with a small crowd beginning to form around him. You watch as he quickly chucks a talisman at a kid in a demon mask, hitting him square in the face. The child then begins to cry and runs off, and he shouts, <laughs> Wow, look at that! It works! Amazing! Uh, for safety like this, money is truly no object. The crowd begins to turn on Kata, who meets your eyes and says, Have I mentioned that every purchase over a gold comes with a free picture with our resident demon hunter, Lu Duck Kong? As he, like, runs over to you. Get, come here! Come, Kong! <laughs> he pulls you in. Ain't he pretty, folks? Come on, just, just a gold. Uh, howdy. You see some of the, uh, some, some of the people in the crowd swoon a little bit. There are a few people who kind of, like, meet your gaze and, and look away very quickly. Oh. He continues his posturing, but what gets your attention is the small gold seal he pulls from his robe. One with the symbol of a sparrow, the symbol of your Sifu's guild. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what about this? This is a 100% solid go- Kind of looks it over. 
The fuck even is this? Wait, wait a second. And I kind of <laughs> reach over and grab at it. Huh? What? Kato, where the hell do you get this thing? I, I, I don't know. I, I, and you watch as his confusion is cut short as an angry half-orc comes basically storming down the street as he oh. shouts, Where is he? As Kata just kind of looks over. Oh, shit. <laughs> Watch as he kind of like, still in your grasp, starts like gathering up all his stuff and tries to make a break for the nearest alley. He's going to try to escape your grip with a one. Oh, boy. As he <laughs> just, Kong, Kong, hear me out. You got to let me go. You got to let me go. <laughs> as this uh, orc shows up, gets like face to face with him and just sort of snarls. The crowd begins to scatter and Kata says, Suji, Suji, baby, we can talk about this. Have you met my uh, bestest friend ever, Lou Duck Kong? You're just who is, who is going to defend me? <laughs> uh, howdy. I apologize for uh, my acquaintance here. I assume that he's done something to wrong you. That little bastard sold me an elixir that turned me purple for five weeks. If it's any <laughs> consolation, I imagine purple must look very good on you. Make a charisma check. <laughs> it's raw charisma. Oh, no. It's like raw charisma. I'll give you advantage because of that that sweet dulcet tone. Oh, yeah, let's go. Um, oh, thank you for the uh, advantage. Kept that from being a natural one. Um, that's going to be a six. Oh, hell yeah, six. He kind of looks at you, but his attention is strictly on Kata, who is still pulling at your arm, just like, let me go, come on, let me go, I need you. I... I, uh, look down at Kata and kind of pull him close. You'll find me later, and you'll tell me where you found this, before I let him go. He books it as Suchi goes, <laughs> <laughs> basically running off after him. He shouts over at Yukong, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll meet you at the festival! Where in the festival? <laughs> the festival! <laughs> So hard to work with. With that. One stone sprinted away from you. He used his entire legs. <laughs> All of his legs. Every single piece of them. Every every bit. So at last, we travel to districts unexplored. Temples and factories repurposed for housing. Layers and layers of history and culture built infinitely upon itself. Shiwa takes the stage. Would you like to describe your character? Yes. So, Shiwa is a 5'5 five five dragonborn sorceress. Um, not counting her horns on top of her head. And she doesn't naturally look like a typical dragonborn because her face is actually pretty humanoid, save for a few red maroon scales on her cheeks that kind of trail down her neck to her human-looking torso, and then the scales reappear at her thighs, shifting to fully dragon legs. She wears mostly ruby reds, gold, and browns, while her attire is considered scantily clad, she does wear a rather large draping robe over her shoulders that looks like a poncho with gold embroidery of could be from a high ranking background, but the symbols are so vague you can't really tell if they're from a distinguished family or not. She has her tail tucked exactly behind the back of her loincloth, so unless she sways it out, you wouldn't know she has one. On her shoulders, she's got her companion that she had found on her journeys, which is a stick bug, 
about the size of your palm. <laughs> but he's not on Hell her shoulder. Yeah. He is he's hiding in between her horns, looking like a piece of string. <laughs> Alright. You find yourself wandering the streets of Zhao Sang, lost in the infinite cascade of lives being lived. Large ships adorned in gold make port along cerulean tides, bringing a vast array of history along with them. As the gangplank is lowered, you see as a palanquin departs from each, flanked by a procession of well-dressed attendants. They clear the way, as some civilians even bow out of respect and in some, case, in some cases are violently pushed aside. There are children begging their families to buy them an array of multicolored toys and trinkets that light up and dance in the mid-morning air, each one a reflection of this nation's storied past. What are you doing? Um, she is staying at a distance, but she takes out her journal, which is several pages thick at this point, and she flips to the nearest blank page, and she starts sketching some of the children in their frolicking activities, some of them who had bought toys with those specific toys. And so she's rendering kind of a larger diagrams of what those toys are. You get flashes, brief insights into the life and times of every citizen. One couple argues over whose parents they'll be spending the festival with. Others embrace beneath the peach blossoms, enraptured in the bliss that is their company. There's a twinge of pain in your chest at that. How different things could have been if given the chance. Two kids run past you in the midst of a game, clashing wooden swords and shouting platitudes to the wind. But what truly gets your attention is this. In the middle of the crowd, you see a child made from burning light. No one else seems to notice. In fact, as the crowd keeps moving, walking towards the festival grounds, they seem to walk right through them. They beckon to you. How, how big is this person who is engulfed in light? Like, maybe three, four feet? About like roughly human child shaped. Okay. Kind of like reach out towards you and you hear this voice. Lady of scales, you are needed. You are found. As it starts walking, Towards me, or just in a general direction? Like, out of the street, kind of off towards one of the less uh, populated areas. Seems to be trying to lead you. She's gonna look at Stickbug. Did you also see that? Are you, are you seeing what I saw? The... the fire child? Okay, then... Good to know I am not hallucinating alone. Um, she's looking around and to, to double check to make sure that like no one else has seen a literal Nobody glowing apparition. <laughs> Everybody else seems enraptured in the festival season. You are the only one alongside Stickbug who sees this child of light. Stick. It seems like a bad idea to follow that, doesn't it? You think that's a bad idea, don't you? I mean, we've had worse. You're not wrong, but we've also had not worse. Hmm. Stickbug seems like just lost in the thought of this. You you <laughs> seem to have given him like an existential crisis. <laughs> As he's just... Huh. What threads of fate bend our will so? I say go for it. Alright, but if this turns out bad, you have to buy dinner. I'm a bug. You can make money. You're a tourist attraction, aren't you? Technically. And here I thought I was a valued member of the team. Valued members that can make money? Oh, that's what valued means. Yes, now we're learning. And so she pats him on the head while she starts following the apparition. <laughs> As you continue, 
The being beckons to you, and as you approach it, flees down an abandoned street leading you somewhere, you hear, Help us! Find us! The twin stars call to you! You continue. She's thinking at the same time, like, how can you call out and ask for my help and then run from me to the point to where I can't get to you and help you? <laughs> Seems to be leading you somewhere. Down these city She's streets. She's about it, but she does continue to follow at a slightly quickened pace. So she's got her long dragon legs. She can kind of trot <laughs> rather than sprint. You catch up to the figure, passing the city limits to the rolling hills of grass beyond. The child stands beneath a cherry blossom tree and repeats, Lady of Scales, you are needed. You are found. Help us. Find us. The twin stars call to you. Watch as the being places a hand on the tree. Your time draws near. And you watch as the tree begins to wither and die, reduced to gray splinters and ash that catch the wind and swirl around you as suddenly your vision goes dark. Did I black out? And dark it remains. Or brief. You can feel of unseen tides that wash over you as they pass. And as your senses return, you find yourself caught in the stillness of eternity. There is serenity. You find yourself in a sea of clouds miles and miles above the Earth's surface. All around you, dragons dance in tune with the harmony of the cosmos, the wind is cool and gentle. The universe is at ease. You feel at peace. You feel home. Do I still have Stickbug with me, or am I alone up here in the clouds? You seem to be alone. Jesus. Am I floating? It's strange. It's like low gravity in a way. You can feel your feet making contact with something, but what it is, you know not. Everything feels like it's floating, like you're underwater. I'm going to swim my way towards the nearest dragon. <laughs> Excuse me? On. Excuse me? Um, can... Can you hear me? Can you see me? You sort of reach out to this dragon that turns to you and its face is just blank. No emotion. As you just hear echoing all around you. Shiwa, please. A voice calls out. You recognize it. Shiwa, no. The clouds grow dark. Oh, shit. A streak of white lightning splinters across the sky. The winds pick up, churning, desperate. A, a hurricane, a storm, you can feel it, the scales tipping. Chaos. The horizon before you shatters, and you begin to fall. You pass the clouds hurtling towards the ground below. It approaches fast, too fast. You can feel the force of wind on your approach, the sound of shattering glass ringing in your ears. You see fire, death, so much death, and suddenly you're back. The last of the ashes fall around you. Catching the light. The figure is gone, replaced with another, a man in a ceremonial mask. He approaches and says, Hey, are you okay? Uh, 
she's like trying to regain her bearings and process what she just experienced and saw and then looks back up at the man and then at the tree that is no longer there did I do that? she's pointing to where the tree was kind of looks over her shoulder do, do what? that was a tree there was there was someone else here was that you? um no I saw you wander off the street up to this hill and then you just kind of stood there for a bit are you she sure you're like, alright as he kind of like walks over <laughs> she crosses her arms a little bit like why would you just follow me for no other reason you seemed lost well, I mean, I there's plenty of people who come to the city who are lost. Why'd you follow me specifically? <sighs> I was hoping to talk to you. Oh. She's like, she takes another step away from him, like apprehensively. About... I find myself on a dark path as of late, and I don't have anyone else. Oh, she's kind of like looking down at her outfit. Oh, I'm sorry if you've mistaken me from, I don't know, a, a priestess or something of the sort. I'm, I'm of no sort of role. I, I... I only got here some time ago. Um, I'm just she. She pulls out her journal. I just I just draw. I there's there's really nothing I can offer you aside from well wishes or whatever's plaguing you on this dark path. See as the wind sort of picks up, he says. I know who you are, Lady Shiwa. It does you no good to lie to me. I mean you no harm. I just. I need to know. She's just like, I'm sorry, I don't know who you think I am. I'm, I'm really nobody. I don't know what you're talking about. She's continuing to like back up in her steps, trying to like get back towards the main city streets. Very well. At least allow me to treat you to a meal for taking up your time. You seem to be wearing rather thin. A mortal body can be so limiting. We all have mortal bodies. I, uh, at this point she is thoroughly freaked out by this encounter, so she just quickly closes her book, makes like a quick bow, and be like, I appreciate the offer, but I think I'm fine. I I hope you can find whatever it is you're looking for, but I promise you it's not me. And she just turns on her heel and sprints back towards the crowds. You sprint back to the crowds. The sound of his voice echoing in your ears. Looking over your shoulder, you notice he's gone. All that's left are a brief scattering of cherry blossom petals. Stick, stick. did you see that too? Was that also weird to you? It's not just me, right? Eh, a little weird. He seemed pretty earnest. Oh, did he feel familiar to you? Not familiar, but desperate. I feel bad I couldn't help him, but that was weird. <laughs> I I don't know who he thought I was, but yeah. Yeah, he didn't feel like your kind of magic either. So <sighs> I think I need a drink. <laughs> well, there's plenty at the festival. Great. And I think it's about a good time to head there now. You think we'll see some of the others? 
I imagine so. Can't seem to shake them as of late. They're so weird. So, birds of a feather, right? <laughs> I'm a bug. You know what I mean, Stick. Oh, and that was a weird encounter, so you are buying dinner. <laughs> Fine. She's going to hold her hand out and kind of put them on the ground. Go on, start doing your little tricks and earn some coin. He starts doing his little tricks. He does a little <laughs> dance. He shoots some lasers out of his hands. It's a whole thing. He do his little dancey dance. <laughs> he do his little Shima dancey puts, dance. Shima puts a little bucket by him that says tips on it. <laughs> a few people do uh, drop a few coppers. Uh, some kids are just sort of like super invested in this bug on the street <laughs> as they're just like, that's so cool. Wouldn't you be? I like... would be. I 100% would be. The kids are me. <laughs> anyway, for those of you heading to the festival, allow me to paint a picture. Imagine a vast dreamscape. Tents rise and fall like waves in the ocean, held aloft by golden threads and pillars of lacquered wood. You can see local warriors testing their might in the Kingmaker's Forge, exchanging blow after blow in an attempt to come out on top. You can see elegantly dressed bards and flowing yukata that sway gently as they dance and sing of stories passed down from their ancestors. There are traders from distant lands exchanging their wares for other equally mysterious trinkets. And to either side of you, three flashes of light signal casters entertaining the young ones with displays of their arcane talents. This is the kind of world the adventures before you fought tooth and nail to create, and here in this isolated kingdom, that dream is alive and well. Passing beneath the wooden gates, you enter the festival grounds. Each and every tent has a lifetime of discoveries laid out for you to peruse. The three of you arrive at roughly the same time. So all in the same place or just all Yeah, the same is it like time? one in the gate same that place. enters into yeah. the crowd? <laughs> You're just all standing beneath the gate. As you turn, you notice the other two. Three tragic messes walk into a bar. <laughs> 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 Somehow I feel like I shouldn't be surprised that y'all are here too. Hey, big boy. She goes up and like pats him on the cheek. Long time no see. Oh, it looks like you've been really eating well lately. You must have gotten a lot of jobs. And sleepyhead. She goes over to Akemi and like puts both her hands on her cheeks and pats them. You look like you're so well rested. How have you two been? <laughs> Akemi's had quite the morning so she's just like <sighs> well I'm hungry I'm yeah. glad we're all on the same I'm glad we're on the same page <laughs> uh food please I food. I've also had a bit of a day I I could use a drink <laughs> Right. And so, I go looking for dinner. <laughs> you go looking for dinner. Anywhere in particular you're heading to, or just... Um, get me somewhere where I can, like, sit down and get a lot of food in front of me all at once. I need, I need some... It comforts my heart to see a table full of food. <laughs> you walk through this entire festival. You can see all these bright colors, people celebrating various ceremonial masks being sold. Um, but as you keep walking, I can only assume you eventually reach a place called Lady Lynn's. It is one of those, it's sort of a noodle house, though in sparse sections are this sort of communal dining experience. It's a bit empty. There are four figures just sort of spending some time out there. Uh, they seem to be having drinks. Uh, there are a few kids sort of running through. Perfect. So you know it's good, the little kids. <laughs> are any of them doing their homework? Uh, oh, yeah, one of them, one of them absolutely <laughs> is. 
<laughs> he's like begrudgingly doing this like <laughs> some sort of math as he's just like on the festival on season. Festival day two. So unfair. On festival season. It's preparing for Kumon. Uh, <laughs> oh, this poor child. Uh, oh anyway, my gosh. So, um, as, as, yeah, as you approach I, the I'm tent. Gonna... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I'm going to see if we can't grab a seat and call down an auntie to bring us some food. It's pretty smart. You do see, as kind of one of the servers who's bringing over these like plates of food to the group of four and like corralling the kids away from them. It's just like. <laughs> Sit wherever you want. Um, it's pretty pretty empty, all things considered. This is the titular Lady Lynn. Um, she is a woman, sort of a little past middle age. Uh, there are definitely a few wrinkles on her face, but the age doesn't really show. Um, see, she's wearing this sort of tied uh, yukata. See, the sleeves are sort of rolled up, stained with presumably food or something. She's kind of like has her hair tied up. Uh, she is a fun detail about this world. Rather than four types of genasi, there are five, which coincide with the five element system. This one is a wood genasi. Humanoid for all intents and purposes. You can see bits of vines that sort of like crawl up the face and like a small, almost bonsai tree growing out of the shoulder. She kind of beckons you over. Let's sit over here. I'll be with you in a second. All right, well, she was going to take a seat and kind of open her journal back to another new page. But then she flips it back a couple pages to something else that she was working on, and she starts drawing in it, trying to remember the mask of the man that she had encountered earlier. And she's drawing it next to the page that's covered in different looking gem sketches. You remember the sort of red coat that flows from his shoulders. It's a wooden mask, lacquered, bits of gold inlaid within to give it this sort of regal look. It's almost crown that replicates the shape of fire that surrounds the mask itself. And you remember the symbol on his forehead. It's this sort of kanji. You're not really sure what it means. She's going to stare at it for a little bit and then remember that she's within company. She's like, oh, sorry. Uh, should we have ordered already? Or did yeah. you guys and I just not pay attention? I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. I got it. I order so much food. I can't <laughs> afford all this food. But someone at this table can. I know that for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's gonna pat him on the shoulder and be like, hold on. Tonight, mm. it's all on him. And she's playing the stick book. He lost the bet today. Man. I was paying for your meal. I don't have an, there is not enough gold in this world to pay for him. Well, she's gonna no. gesture out the door. It's like you can go dance for more coin then. Cause of that's a bet. Fine as he walks over. <laughs> and you notice a human with dark hair, a scar across the left eye, kind of like look over at your table from the group of four and just says Is that a what is that a stick bug? Have you ever I... seen a stick bug? <laughs> no, I have. I, I just didn't know they talked. That's, oh, that is truly it's amazing. It's just him. Yeah. Uh, that is something else. Hey, Natsuka, come look at this. You watch as a tiefling with the <laughs> <laughs> like purple horns that sort of curl back and are like inlaid with jewels. Walks over. You can see this like very flowy uh, kimono. You can see as it kind of like cuts down a little lower than traditional. Kind of showing off a lot of chest as he walks over. Oh my god, that is amazing. <laughs> Dude, uh, Aputi, come over here. <laughs> like the other two walk over and look. <sighs> oh my god. I lean over to see what. See, I told you it was weird. Obligatory it's also question. 
profitable. Mm. <laughs> you already know what I'm gonna ask. I would love for you to ask it out loud for the for the audience at home. For the audience. No. To I know my pain. You already know, what I'm, you already know what I'm going to ask. Chris, are they hot? <laughs> How hot are they? Are they? <laughs> That's my favorite game to play. How hot are the NPCs? Well, we will go down the line. You see a human with dark hair, scar across the left eye. Sees pretty built almost around like Kong's height and muscle mass. He is wearing this very plain shirt tied with a belt. You can see sort of these long pants and a sword at his back. Uh, the other pants one, nice. a tiefling with <laughs> purple horns. Um, you can see there's this sort of like almost ethereal nature to them. The eyes glow this very distinct white uh see the hair is tied up in a bun behind him very low uh cut kimono tattoos all along the body shamisen in hand uh the one they identified as do the iu do uh, is a halfling sort of graying hair blue eyes you can see um it's like set of armor, just like very intense leather layered over itself. And then there's Aputi, which is an elf with sort of black hair, deep purple skin, a drow, you're pretty sure. Sort of moving elegantly as she passes by to look at this fucking bug. She was gonna kind of like scoot his tip bucket with her foot under the table and just kind of push it out near him since everybody's starting to gather now. You do watch as a bunch of other people from the streets start to gather as <laughs> the one identified as Natsuka, the tiefling, kind of looks over at you. This is the best thing I have seen all day. Uh, please, let us uh, pay for your meal. Is, is, does that sound fair? Festival um. season. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually, I think that's a... Yeah, I think we'll take that. Yeah. Watches uh, Natsuka calls <laughs> over to uh, Lady Lin, starts speaking like really fast Kumoran, as she's like, <laughs> kind of drags over all this food and drops it on the table. If you need anything else, just uh, just holler. Uh, see, Natsuka turns over to Bowen, the human. So he kind of continues to speak. Please uh, finish your tale. Sorry, we were in the middle of this. Uh, it's a sort of game we like to play. And you can see <laughs> um, Bowen. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, where was I? Um, anyway, that that's when I knew, lying there in that hospital bed, that she was the one for me, because, you know, she was the one who put me there. Uh, but, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. And, you know, lessons learned. Never challenge a girl from Sukdaban to a drinking contest, or an arm wrestling contest, or a sword fight, all in the same day. <laughs> Regardless, though, I miss her every day. Prove. She's waiting for me. She promised, and I swear, once all this is over, I'm taking her to see the world, just like I said I would. When all what is over? Kind of looks over. The festival season. There's, a, uh, you know, the choosing champions. We're, uh, Sort of in the running, you know. Uh, Champions. Yeah, part of the festival. Uh, I think there's a, there's a, there's like a puppet show, like down the down the way. If you want to check oh, that shoot. out. Like a puppet show, like you know, with little fellas like, getting pulled yeah, around like on little, the street. Yeah, yeah. You you know ah, those those are shows. my favorites. They are so good. And so good to see. know you know what puppets are, Kong. What? You see, it's like Bowen I, looks I, at you like. <laughs> Is that a what? is that a normal thing? I don't know. That's is like a, a, a this is a regionality thing. I'm. I simply assume that from where you're from, I thought you would have had shadow puppets, where they're on I hinges mean, and the wall rather than the marionette. I mean, puppets. sometimes. That's all I, I meant. <laughs> Kemi like pulls out a fan and just like. Bonk? She won? <laughs> <laughs> it seems a little, uh. It seems a little. What did I do? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, a little bit. You know, one of those, one of them uh, macro aggressions, something like that. Mi micro transgressions, micro transactions. Here on Hot Asian D and D, we we tackle like classes. We talk. We tackle those those. Uh... Yeah, in case. Anyways, <laughs> um, I take a, a bite of um, bread. So, like, how long is this festival season supposed to last for? Sorry, I mean, I, I ain't from around here. No, nah, no, nah, it's it's fine. Uh, Natsuka, you you want to uh, tackle this? As you know, he kind of walks over and it's just like playing a very simple tune. Um. Yeah. The festival season goes for about a week, I think. Uh, they announce the champions at the end, uh, but this one is just, you know, getting to know people. All the dignitaries come down. It's uh, it's, it's pretty great. Uh, cool, History-wise. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Great times. I look at the other two. Y'all ever, uh, y'all ever been to a festival like this before? No, not quite, but would I? Have I been in this city long enough to know what the festival is about? Should I do a history check? <laughs> sure, make a history check. Okay. That is a nat 20. <laughs> you? A good roll. Let's God go. Damn. Let's yeah. go. On a history check. <laughs> you. Just, different, just built different. <laughs> All right, so you know uh, that this festival is called the Wuxing Festival. Uh, it celebrates these proud heroes that did battle with a vicious beast. Um, it is a really big deal here in Chaosang. It's, uh, you would know that people cite this island as the sort of setting for the final battle between uh, that group and a monster called the Orochi, but that's about as far as you get. Um, With his mouth still full, and like, well, I've never been to a festival like this, but I do at least know what it's about. And she'll explain everything you just said. <laughs> there are some... Uh, <laughs> see as uh, Bowen kind of speaks up. There's a, like I said, puppet show. If you want more history about it. Uh, oh, I, you mean I, like the puppet show's about the... Yeah, uh -oh. no, it kind of like covers the story, I think, yeah. if you want to check that out. You know, it was oh, pretty fun it, for man. the kids, I think. We'll be, we'll be yeah, here if you, if you decide to come back. I feel like puppet shows can be enjoyed by people of all ages. I just want to make that as clear as possible. <laughs> just saying, I, I, I feel like, you know, putting age restrictions on, I, I, I just think that. So, oh, no, so, no, so, I, so. I agree. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Y'all want to go see a puppet show? Uh, I suppose we can. Um, yeah. She looks over the table spread at first and tries to check if there's, like, any raw meats first. Or just... There are. Pop and just a piece in her mouth. Just crunching it. <laughs> All of them kind of look at you. <laughs> Kemi's, like, lived here for a while, so she, she knows a bit about what this is about. She's like, yeah, puppet show is one of her favorite things. Um, she also just kind of pulls out a, a little, like, napkin and starts just stuffing things that could be used as snacks into it <laughs> and then ties it up very neatly and, and kind of sticks it into her obi. <laughs> you watch it as, as you, you watch as Bowen kind of like, food's going to be here when you get back oh, okay <laughs> we're, we're gonna be here for a while if you if you you know want to stop by again seem like good folk i mean and i'm also grabbing food and like <laughs> I'm, I'm bread sticking in my purse um <laughs> you, never, you, never, you never know when you gotta eat on me listen this is the true asian experience <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you never know when you're gonna need a meal. Look, um, you paid for it, or somebody else paid for it. You keep it, and you. It'd eat be it disrespectful to waste. leave leftovers, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, um, kind of turning back to the rest of the group. So, 
aside from the festivities, anything bring y'all around here in particular? I mean, I'm hoping to find uh, Kaida around here. Kaida, y'all remember? Why? What have you done this time? Got in trouble with a uh, half or earlier today. Some big fella got real pissed off about his skin turning purple or something. But more importantly, the uh, the kid had this with him, and I pull out the, the badge. Um, just trying to find out where he got it from. Well, did he say he was going to be at the festival? Yeah, but didn't say where, which is a little baffling to me. It's right? Like, like, okay, Dad. Yeah. Well, if you walk around, I'm sure we'll run into with him. him with the things. <laughs> Hmm? If you walk around, I'm sure we'll run into him. Or at least we'll hear him selling his trinkets. Hmm. Hopefully. So, right. um... So you guys head to the puppet show? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I'm coming with me because I'm not leaving him in, in the restaurant with the group of people gawking at him. <laughs> <laughs> Stickbug like enters into a bow. It's like, thank you, thank you. There is roughly about like, I want to say like five gold pieces in there. Like he did really well. Hey. Wait, how much did he make? Five, five gold? gold pieces. <laughs> That's how does he? Have, how does people? How do people here have so much money? I, <laughs> I stare at the gold pieces. Classism, Kong. <laughs> I look back at the restaurant and its empty seats, and I look at that gold. I look over to Shiwa. People around here just carry around that type of money for for showing off. I. She's kind of looking at Akemi. I am not entirely sure, but I would have thought you were used to this by now, considering. She's like kind of looking at Akemi, waiting for her to do her usual sneak out of gold coin and just hide it somewhere for someone to pick up later. I just, I just figured that was a her being weird thing. I gotta be real with you. I mean, Akemi, she's... without like paying attention to either of them, she's not listening. She doesn't. It's not registering. She just, you know, pulls out a gold coin. Yeah. Puts it on the floor and just there kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> like, can I can I pick up the coin? Can you can pick up the coin. coin? <laughs> I pick up the coin and I, I just hold it in my hand and I look at you all like this is this is a lot of money. I put it in my pocket with my one other gold coin <laughs> that you got from a kid. <laughs> Which a Kevin also gave me. You <laughs> pays you your salary. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, my entire career is going to be funded by a cabbie. <laughs> well, this sounds like you're all set for life then. What are you complaining about, Tom? <laughs> uh, about gift cards, I suppose. Uh, I want you to know that this brings me life. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you depart from Lady Lynn's the party gives you a brief wave the crowd parts uh a lot of the kids are sad about sh stick bug oh. leaving so they kind of trail after you um as you sort of approach the more entertainment focused part of the festival you can see these various storytellers singers performers and right at the back this small cart you can see children sort of dressed up as these grand heroes doing battle in the street, a, a sort of costume play, if you will, as they <laughs> uh, take their seats. You can see this old, wrinkled man. Actually, you would recognize uh, who it is, Akemi. It's Gigi. Hey! Gigi! As he has this, like, sort of shadow box. I think that's what it's called, or like a... The, the the puppet box thing. The stage. The stage. Thank you. 
<laughs> as he kind of looks over at all these young kids and begins his story. Young kids and me, excuse you. And you. Young kids and the three adults <laughs> and the crowd following those three adults. <laughs> well, the crowd is more children, so... He begins. There was once a grand and noble kingdom. The people lived in harmony with the world around them. There was peace and love. And candy at the end of the story, if you sit quietly, he watches two kids put their wooden swords away. Until one day, a vast and ceaseless darkness rolled across the land like a storm. The world was full of fear and chaos until one day, a bright and shining light came down from the sky. Four heroes, blessed by the elder gods, rose from the ground where the light had shone. Wielding magic weapons and artifacts with powers unknown. And also candy for the children in the second row who will please sit still. I'm not going to tell you again. Moving on. The four heroes set upon their quest to defeat the forces of darkness and defend the meek. The purity of their spirit guiding their way. Their quest was perilous. Kingdoms fell to the dreaded Orochi. An embodiment of the primordial- I swear to god, kid, put the sword away or I will get the guards. Where- where was I? Um... I snatched the sword, like I just- Yeah. It. Yeah, I grab <laughs> the, the sword and just like give the kid like a very mean look. <sighs> Kinda like, sits down, quietly. Where was I? Oh yes. The embodiment of the primordial darkness. Even still, the group ventured forward through horrors and perils never before seen by mortal man. All to save the world they swore to protect. They gave their lives to slay the mighty beast, and when it was over, three of them were found. What happened to the fourth, I hear you ask? As all the kids are kind of like in this uproar of like, what happened? Some say he wanders the world, fighting for truth and justice, in memory of his fallen comrades. But fret not, children. For their souls remain reincarnated through every generation. Which is why, every so often, we identify those very souls and send them out into the world. He kind of like comes close, kneels next to the children. For if you keep their dream in your hearts, their family will one day be reunited. Who knows? It could be one of you, as he kind of tosses the candy into the audience. Oh, God. And they kind of like, enter to this off and God, do you just take the... <laughs> Roll a dexterity uh, check. Oh, just no, like, I just grab this candy. Come on. <laughs> We're also the audience. We just have candy. <laughs> Akemi, who two. knows she has candy waiting at home. Oh, no. Wait, no, I have a, I have a two. to... One hits you in the face. Four. Four? One hits you in the face. Hold on, hold on. Can I... Can I... Can I use inspiration? <laughs> How do you inspire Kong in this like half a second? I, I just know. <laughs> you you feel in your soul that I'm gonna go <clears throat> gun for a candy. A candy who's been watching Kong this entire time, completely enthralled in this story. Just little little inspiring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with, five. with that really five? Oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many times I can say this but one hits you in the face <laughs> yeah. you do get it though you get the candy it just you it know smacks you ah, donk, donk. so and I as the story I sort of concludes candy and I look over to uh, I look over to Akemi and kind of give like thumbs up yeah. <laughs> with that um the story comes to a close. The legend of the four heroes. Um, Gigi kind of prepares for the next show as the children depart. And we are going to cut. <laughs>